Once upon a time, there was a Tonkor, and it ruled supreme, it basically dominated the meta. And then, it got nerfed, and other weapons were more powerful, and meta changed several times over the course of several years, but then, we got an AoE nerf, and an ammo nerf, and now the Tonkor can reign supreme again. And that may very well be the worst intro I ever done, but you know what? I'm going with it. Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today I have the absolute pleasure of revisiting the Tonkor in Kuva spec. I got a cheap build, something affordable, something that most players will be able to get into. But we also got the end game set up with Prime mods, Galvanized mods, a Riven. We're gonna be taking this one to Steel Path and put it through its paces. That said though, please bear in mind that my building guides usually take a more new player friendly tone. I'm gonna stop and explain whatever I feel is necessary for more casual or newer Tenno. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, please, bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Kuva Tonkor. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Kuva Tonkor is a true blue grenade launcher, so you point, you shoot, you launch a grenade, which makes big boom. How big is the boom? 7 meters by default. But unfortunately, that 7 meters explosion also comes with a hefty 70% damage drop-off. What the hell does that even mean anyway? You're getting full damage only at the epicenter of the explosion, and you're losing more damage the more you get to the edges. Right at the edge, up to 70% less damage. So do bear that one in mind. Now this being a grenade and all whatnot, you got travel time to the blasted thing and a nasty dropping arch. So you gotta learn how to aim the actual projectile. You gotta take into account the actual projectile travel speed as well as that nasty drop off. So aim something like so for targets which are way, way in front. Honestly, this is a learning experience and you shouldn't have much of an issue. Outside of that, you'll notice that the Tonkor has a bit of a delay when it fires and when it starts to reload, and that is because it has a magazine of only one, which is a bit of a pain. You will shoot, it will discharge, and then it has a delay between the time it stops firing and the time it starts reloading, and you can bypass that by simply pressing R, like so. So this makes for a more streamlined and uh, experiencing gameplay, and of course more DPS as well. Now the ammo reserve is up to 30, which is actually not bad considering the recent ammo nerfs we got for explosive weapons. Again, it's not the most usable weapon in the world, but if you know how to build it, this can transform into an absolute bloody monster, as I will demonstrate. So let's have a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. First of all, this is a Kuva weapon, which means you're gonna have to choose a progenitor. My recommendation is to go with a Toxin progenitor. Mine is a 52.4% roll, so you got a bit of leeway there, you can make it even a bit more powerful than this. If you go for Toxin, it's gonna be a whole lot easier to get your elemental combos on with a single mod, which makes room on the build for more powerful and very important mods, as I will demonstrate just a tad later. Mod capacity 80 out of 80, hey what gives, how is that even possible? You need to understand that Kuva weapons, Tenant weapons and the Parasesis all start off with mod capacity normal 30 out of 30, but the more forma you add to the weapon, the more mod capacity you will get by default. You add one forma, you get two extra, another forma, four extra. So you're gonna be capping out at five forma and the mod capacity will be 40 out of 40. Hop into actions, plug in the Oro King Catalyst and double that mod capacity and you're gonna be left with mod mod capacity 80, which is absolutely insane. Now, do you actually need a mod capacity of 80? No, 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 you really don't. And you don't need 5 forma either. Honestly, for the Tonkor, 2 to 3 forma maximum and you're good to go. However, for all Kuva weapons, Tenant weapons and the Parasesis, if you want to squeeze out all the mastery points, you will be forced to format at least 5 times to get that mod capacity and all the mastery points. So do bear that one in mind. Now if you don't know where to get the Orokin Catalyst, this one is a possible or guaranteed reward depending on your activities. For example, you can get one from the Sortie, you can get one from Nightwave, some events in Warframe also feature an Orokin Catalyst, and of course you can also pay 20 plat to have one installed. My friends, if you're thinking about, is the Kuva Tonkor even worth it? 120%. Sync that Catalyst, sync that Forma, you're gonna be loving it. As for Valence Fusion, this is what we use to upgrade our Kuva weapons. You know that 52 point something percent I have? If I actually cared about it, I could upgrade it all the way to 60. But if you don't know how Valence Fusion works on Kuva weapons and Tenant weapons, link the cards right now. It's a short little guide. When it comes to the MTR Kane slot, you wanna unlock this one 
yesterday essentially this is gonna add a whole lot of power or flexibility on our weapons and i will give you more details just a tad later as for the excellent slot now in this one normally normally your best in slot is gonna be terminal velocity with 60 percent projectile flight speed it makes it easier to aim easier to land those grenades and you're gonna say something like hey why do i care dude it's a seven meter explosion big bada boom i get the damage don't forget about the drop off actually getting the explosion in the right point to deal damage to the right targets is important especially if you don't have any clump up abilities you got clump up abilities you're all good to go if you're having ammo issues you are spamming too much and i will show you how to spam too much you might want to go with vigilante supplies instead normally it shouldn't really be required so do bear that one in mind either way terminal velocity or vigilante supplies Accuracy is going to be 100, we don't care. Ammo maximum is 30, which is not bad considering the recent ammo nerfs. Ammo pickup is bad at 3. Fire rate of 3. Magazine of 1. Noise alarming, because you know, grenade launcher. 1.5 second reload, which will, we will use to our advantage just a tad later. And a riven disposition set at 3 out of 5. This tells us that the Tonkor, the Kuva Tonkor, is not exactly the most popular weapon, but it's not unpopular either. More important, we're going to be able to leverage the power of riven mods. And right now, Tonkor rivens aren't really all that expensive, and I will show you a decent one and what its, ca its uh, capabilities are. When it comes to the damage, we got fantastic critical chance. 30% by default, which is way above average, and a way above average critical multiplier as well at 2.5x. Let's get one thing out of the way, you're gonna mod for crit, obviously. Status chance, however, is pretty poor at only 17%, and considering we're not gonna be having that many damage instances into our targets that quick, normally that is, it's not exactly fantastic. Normally, out of a projectile from the Kuva Tonkor, you got two damage instances. The first damage instance is the projectile making contact with a target. So, for example, if the actual grenade physically touches a enemy, and the second one, the big bada boom explosion. And this is reflected in the damage as well. This 90 damage that you see here is the projectile physically making contact with a target, but the 1000 plus is the big explosion. Obviously, like 93% of your damage is gonna be that big explosion. And the toxic damage that you see here comes from my progenitor. You will have blast, slash, and puncture on the explosive by default regardless. So do bear that one in mind. One more thing that I would like to clarify before we go any further in terms of usability. If you take a look at the effect of the explosion, it almost looks like it's spreading out into multiple little grenades because we have other weapons in Warframe that do that. Rest assured that is just a visual effect. There are no additional bomblets. I just wanted to clear that out really quickly. Now, with that out of the way, let's have a look at a standard introductory level setup. Damage duration, multi-shot with vigilante armaments and split chamber. Critical chance for the use of critical delay, 200%, minus 20% fire rate, and critical damage for the use of vital sense with 120%. Hunter Munitions is mandatory when it comes to a slash built on this particular weapon. Most of your slashes, the very large majority, are going to be coming from Hunter Munitions. The beauty about this one, it's bypassing the whole status chance. Now, some slashes will be coming from the weapon's innate slash value, but only very, very few. You can simply test this by using Hunter Munitions on the build, taking it off, testing again. You will see how powerful this one really is. Now that critical delay kind of affects us with the minus 20% fire rate, especially if you enjoy the whole streamlined gameplay that you can achieve with the Tonkor, as I will showcase. But nothing we can't fix. We only got 160-60, one elemental mod on the weapon. It's going to be a 60-60 cold mod, which will be combining with the default toxin that I have on my weapon. Since I chose a toxin progenitor, it's going to be making viral, which leaves up a free slot. Because normally, when you make viral on a weapon, you need two of the blasted things, right? You need your toxin and you need your cold. So it would look something like so. Thanks. Now I can go with only the one making some more room. Now some of you will say, what about a 90 mod? Or what about prime cryo rounds? Should I, shouldn't I go for that one if I have it? Very good question. Here's the thing. Status chance on this one is pretty bad. And the consistency of your viral procs are not exactly fantastic going for a 90 mod while it will grant you a bigger boom a bigger explosion it's gonna really affect your viral proc consistency my recommendation go with rhyme rounds now with one exception or caveat if you're a veteran of the game and you already have prime cryo rounds and you're gonna be coupling this one with the panzer vulpa Phyla, that will get you viral procs only then you go for this one instead of the 6060 you got it fantastic 
Now, what should I plug into my free slot and all whatnot? You got a couple of options. Let's go the consistent route. More explosion radius. Explosive weapons with a 7 meter range by default. Why the hell not? Fire in the storm. Now, of course, if you got the Prime version, go for Prime version. If not, you're going to simply use the normal one, which is going to be getting you 24%. What the frick is it? Firestorm? Firestorm? Sometimes it bugs out like that. Don't ask me why. Firestorm, there you go, Firestorm with 24%, we had one but it was un, uh, unupgraded, 24% is not a whole lot, keep in mind these are the numbers after the nerf, so 24 for the normal, 44 for the prime version, this means 1.7 meters extra on your explosion, and you know what, it's not all that much, it's really not, but considering that blasted fall off of 70%, it's gonna be helping with that one as well, so you can go for something like so. Another option is reload speed. If you want to spam more, you're going to be needing yourself some reload speed. How much reload speed? As much as you bloody can get. Fast hands normally gives you 30%, which is not all that fantastic. Now you see, the Tonkor has an exclusive mod, however, Precision Strike. Check this one out. Hitting an enemy directly with a grenade increases reload speed by a whopping 150% for 5 freaking seconds what are you nuts dude prime fast hands has 55 percent give this one gives you almost triple that it's absolutely freaking insane so we're gonna be going for this one uh, but but because there's always has to be a but this one unfortunately from my recollection and let me double check that really quick just to make sure i'm giving you guys the correct information here So if you didn't get it then, from what I know, the mod is tradable, you can buy it from the trade chat, and unless I miss my guess, and please don't quote me on this one, you may obtain it or may not obtain it by fusing mods. The problem is, if you're a newer player coming to the game, I don't think you're gonna have an easy time getting Precision Strike. So I'm gonna be showcasing it with and without Precision Strike. We're gonna go for more explosive radius for now, and you know what, or reload speed, whatever, it doesn't really matter all that much, let's go with a bit of reload speed, this is a introductory level setup. We're gonna spawn in Corrupted Heavy Goons, level 120, and just before we do that, I'm gonna make sure that nothing will skew my test result, that means no Warframe buffs, no passives, that'll make it seem grander, higher, better, more damage, I want you to see what the weapon is capable of on its own two feet, and of course I'm gonna press R as fast as I can, so I can reload and fire, reload and fire. How's that? How's that? Not bad. Not bad from an introductory level build. 120 level corrupted heavy goons there got absolutely bloody annihilated. And that to me is pretty impressive for a, from a weapon that again doesn't really require any special mods whatsoever you can take a look at the viral procs you can take a look at the splash procs let me go in close so you can see it a little bit better you see this is why i insist on that consistency if you don't get the procs then it simply doesn't hurt all that much look at that 13,000. absolutely fantastic now that's one way you can build it but i have a few variations on it let's assume for a second that you can get your hands on precision strike because this is a game changer Precision strike instead of fast hands. I mean, 30 versus... Oh, wait, that's vile precision. My bad. There you go. Instead of 150, 150... I mean, it's gonna be insane. Let me just show you really quick the actual demonstration on this one. And again, press R as often as you can, my friends. You can bind your fire to your scroll wheel or your R to your scroll wheel. Whatever tickles your fancy. Look at that. Boom. We're going. We're going. Here we go, baby. That fire rate. Absolutely insane. Just keep in mind that if you're going for the fire rate buff from precision you gotta actually hit a target after uh, otherwise you're not gonna get that buff and it doesn't last for that long so continue directly making contact uh with your targets when it comes to the actual grenade yeah that's the trick of it so like so and go normal average everyday mods absolutely freaking insane man fan Fantastic. I didn't even let the procs finish off the targets, even though I could have. Now, I know what you're gonna say. Oh, uh, man, that's fantastic, but can we do even better? Yes, we can. But now we're kind of gonna be going away from the whole new player thing, right? Because if you're a newer player or a casual tenor, you might not have fractalized reset. This is a arcane that I almost never used. On ability cast, 
on ability cast. 240% reload speed for 5 seconds. So it's good on a frame that can spam abilities really easily or continuously spam abilities. Dude, 240%. You're gonna say, ah, then we don't need precision strike anymore, right? We can go for something like more explosion radius. Yes, you're right. Or we can keep both of them and have fun. How's that sound? How's that sound? Let me show it to you like this really quick. Uh, okay, what was that? Activate that, do that, and you gotta keep an eye on your buffs a little bit. Go. How was that? How was that? Oh, come on, man. That was absolutely freaking insane. I love it. Yes, you can go for more explosion radius, especially if you got the... If you got the uh, Prime version, but honestly, I would recommend you simply don't. Simply don't and just go for maximum fire rate. It's true, if you go like this, you will have some trouble when it comes to the actual ammunition. So in that case, go for Vigilante Supplies. If you're going to be using both Fractalize Reset together with Precision Strike. And I know you fantastic people just want to see one more time. Lisa. One more time, just one more time. Oh, you got it, buddy. One more time, just for you because you asked so nicely. Let's spam one ability. How beautiful was that? Absolutely freaking insane. Now, I know what you're gonna say. Can we do even better than that? And the answer is yes, you can do even better than that. How about, how about Lord Harrow? Yes, now Lord Harrow, second, normally you use him for his passive, for his fourth ability. Activate his fourth ability, critical chance, critical damage, fantastic. But in this case, I'm just gonna show you what he can do using his second ability that grants you fire rate and reload speed. Exactly what you need to make this even more insane than that. So activate second ability. Actually, you can stack. Did you know you can stack more with Harrow? If you press multiple times, see? You can stack a longer two ability of his if you want to. And now, go. How's that? How's that? Absolutely insane, man. I, I just I just love this. This interaction is, is just blowing my mind. I'm having so much fun with it. So yes, you can go for something like Harrow or other Warframes that would synergize beautiful with this one. Enough about introductory level setups. Te technically, we were still at the introductory level stage. If you're looking for something a bit more high-end, then you're looking at something like this. We're gonna go with Galvanized Chamber. No, we will not use Galvanized Aptitude because its damage bonus does not apply to the explosion. And as we learned, the explosion is the very large majority of our damage. Uh, instead of Serration, since some of you don't like Serration, you can use Prime Firestorm, definitely not a bad idea, or you can also use a Bane mod if that is what you desire. I'm against Bane mods out of principle, but they will add a lot of power to the weapon. And we're going to be keeping Precision Strike. Now, I opted out of uh, Fractalized Reset because you don't really need it. Honestly, what you really need on the weapon for consistency and not running into ammo issues 24-7 is going to be Precision Strike alone. If you got that one with the 150%, you, my friend, are good to go. And I'm going to be showcasing the weapon like so without Harrow, with a Warframe that does not offer anything to the weapon in terms of buffs, the beautiful Protea. You guys love the fashion? Courtesy of Lotus Finder, if I remember correctly. Beautiful. Now let me show you what the weapon can do. And that was with no stacks from the get-go. Now we got a couple of stacks from Merciless and all whatnot, and the Arcane as well, which will grant us a whole lot more flat damage than before. Now what I can do is do a single shot and let you see the carnage. Look at that. The targets that were more to the epicenter got a whole lot more damage. We were lucky with the procs over there. A single shot is more than enough normally to annihilate a high-level target. Take a look at that. Absolutely freaking fantastic. Now the reason why I'm spamming is because I want you to see how fun the weapon can be. But you don't need to. Honestly, with a build such as this, at this level, one, two shots towards the feet, something of the sort is more than enough. Even though, keep in mind, you gotta make contact with a target to get that reload speed going and all whatnot. My friends, honestly, it cuts through targets with no problem whatsoever. Now, of course, I understand you may have some reservations considering we are shooting standing still targets, so let's head on over to Steel Path and see how the Tonkor behaves. Welcome to the Void, my friends. Now I have Revenant with me. Revenant will do nothing to buff the actual damage of the weapon, but I do have the Panzer Volpophila, which means I'm gonna be getting vital procs from her, so I substituted my 60-60 
cold mod with a 90% electricity mod. So now I have vital and corrosive. And this is what I can do to steal path enemies. I'm just gonna walk. I'm just gonna pick up ammo with no problem whatsoever. Look at my ammo. Yes, look at my ammo. I have no issues whatsoever. And you're not really gonna have as long as you're not gonna be spamming like a maniac. Though we do enjoy spamming like maniacs now, don't we, my friends? From time to time, spamming like a maniac is definitely fun. Hopefully, the developer will understand that as well. I mean, if you got targets in front of you, destroy it. By firing gun. Fire gun, you win. Now let's see what we can do to the capture target. Hello, Mr. Capture Target. Was that a single shot? Yes, it was a single shot. Are you gonna bleed to death? Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Careful with nullifiers and revenant because it's gonna do the faint. A single shot, level... I don't know what that is. Level 130-ish, corrupted heavy goon, two shots. And it has, of course, the steel path modifiers with 250% added to essentially everything. That was collateral damage from the explosion and it's gonna be bleeding out. How beautiful is that? This is the power of the Kuva Tonkor. My friends, one of the most powerful AoE weapons right now in Warframe. 100% recommend. But how about some more Warframe buffs before we go? And who better than Lady Mirage Prime and her outstanding buffs? And I know what you're gonna say. Dude, what about Harrow? Second ability synergizes beautifully well with your build and now we can also leverage his four ability for more critical chance. And that is true, but keep in mind, if you wanna get the most out of Harrow's fourth ability, that beautiful crit, you're gonna have to go for headshots. For body shots, you're only gonna be getting maximum of 50%. And the Tonkor is not exactly a headshot machine, now is it? For the most amount of damage, Lady Mirage Prime and her outstanding Eclipse buff. Honestly, nothing really compares to that, as long as you get the buff high enough. Now I'm gonna have to apologize, my voice is literally leaving me, so we're gonna have to wrap this up pretty quickly. Corrosive projection against heavily armored targets. This is definitely a good idea, but it's not so good that you can't use anything else. Go for the aura of your choosing, whatever your build requires. And if you're a newer player coming into the game, keep in mind that Energy Siphon used to be my best friend at low mastery ranks. Even though this one doesn't really give you a whole lot of energy, look into Xenuric. That's a better idea. And if you don't know what Xenuric means, you'll find out eventually. When it comes to Arcanes, these are a lot more impactful. A mandatory Arcane is gonna be Arcane Avenger, R5. On damage, 21% chance for that massive 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. Stacking on top of what you already have, applying to primary, secondary, and to your melee at the exact same time. As for a primary Arcane, honestly, I recommend you have one for your actual Warframe. Go for some armor, something like Guardian, go for your Energize. But if you want to pump up the level of the damage of the weapon even more, you can go for something like Arcane Rage. This will add you flat damage, but on headshot. Honestly, you don't really need this one. Some fire rate would be good considering the way we play. Yes, we can go with something like Arcane Acceleration. On critical hit, we're going to be getting ourselves 90% fire rate to primary weapons, but not shotgun. So we can use something like so. It would have been good to get some reload speed, but unfortunately we don't have an Arcane that gives reload speed to primary weapons. When it comes to companion buffs, you can use the Panzerful Pophyla, get yourself the Viral Prox, and instead of building Viral on the weapon, build something else, something like Heat and uh, Corrosive, for example. That is technically possible if you choose the right progenitor. For example, you can go for a Heat progenitor, yes, and then make Corrosive on the weapon, but that means you're gonna be sacrificing a mod slot, so do bear that one in mind. I'm gonna spawn the highest level I can, dear D, I need levels in the thousands and please can I have a toggle to turn on the steel path modifiers and pause the AI so they can hit me and I can get my glorious, absolutely glorious buffs. And powerful Mirage and her free ability for a massive Eclipse buff and considering that the weapon was one-shotting before, oh quiet for the ever so lovely, oh man, beautiful clones. It was one-shotting before, guess what's gonna happen now? It's quiet. The reason it's quiet, my friends, is because you can one-shot with no problem whatsoever. This is the power of Eclipse and the Kuva Tonkor. Let's get one thing out of the way. These are pretty insane Warframe buffs, but the Kuva Tonkor is no slouch. As you can see, sending enemies flying and the Tenno space program is still somewhat still alive, despite these best efforts to kill it and all whatnot. My friends, this is an absolutely insane weapon, a weapon that everybody needs right the F now. Go farm it, enjoy it, love the Kuva Tonkor, while the loving is still good, if you know what I mean. As always, my name is Blazar, thank you guys so much for watching, like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. 
And if you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below, especially if you want to suggest the next weapon review. For example, hey Laser, how's about an update on this, that, or the other thing, and all whatnot. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Yes, we do Warframe streams. And if you want to help us continue making this content, consider supporting us via Patreon. There's a link in the cards, upper right portion on the screen, and in the description down below, right now. But, until next time, my friends... Bye-bye.